All right. I think we are live. Please give me a comment if you can hear me. I'm going to add Dara on. So hopefully I'll be able to figure that out. Okay, you see and hear me. Perfect. All right. Now I have to figure out how to get Dara on. All right. Let's see. Um, doo -doo. How do I <laughs> invite camera mic? All right. Here we go. Um, Okay, hopefully that has worked. All right, hello everyone. We are just waiting for Dara to come on. Um, let me see if I have to do anything. I invited her. You know, I'm really not good at this. So... I probably should have practiced a little more. But here I am, invite, having issues. How do I add my girl? Like right there, right there. I'll text Dara, see what we're waiting for. <laughs> All right, I am having trouble, she says. Okay. So um, I just resent a link. So we'll see if this helps. Hoping for some inspiration. Hello from Tennessee. Mary Ann. All right, somebody said you can't hear me. Can you hear me? It says I'm good here. All right, now how do I get my guest on? All right. All right. Da, da, da. All right, so if you just popped on, just hang out a little bit, say hello, say who, where you're from. We're waiting for Dara to jump on. She says she's having issues, and I hope it's not on my end. Solo layout, okay. I have sent her a link. This is really going to stink if we can't do this, so I'm wondering... Setting, guess. 
All right, that's not it. Okay. Let's call her, all right? That might be easier. I'm almost on here. I had to download Chrome. Oh yeah, yeah. Have to be on Chrome. Yep. All right. So, so it's just it's just loading up now. I've okay. got two screens going. So all right, I'll be right there. I'll just wait. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. So she has to download Chrome to go on Streamyard. That is the streaming service that we use to do this. So she said a couple minutes and she will be on. So let's see. Can I tell how many people we have here? <laughs> oh, we have a donation. How nice. Thank you, Pamela. <laughs> All right. No worries, Lisa. We'll wait for you. I love it. Because you all know that this is not my forte. That's why Kaylee's around here. So. Oh, oh, here we go. Yay. Was it my fault? <laughs> All right. Are you on, Derek? Can you see? Can you hear? See me? All right. I got you. Did everybody hear both of us? Let's see. Do yes. we like this? Which view do we like? Do we like this view? Hello, hello. It's you. Yay. Yep, I like yep, this yep. view. I'm like talking us. to you. Look at my hair. Do I got my hair done today? What do I think? Huh? All right. Thank you for waiting, ladies. Um, the irony of procrastination. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I know. It looks so good. So good. Okay. So tell me all the things. Today we're talking about procrastination, right? Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Are you, are you talking to me? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me, Dara? Okay. I can hear you. Okay, I'm, I can't really hear you. You can't hear me at all? Oh, now I can. Now we're good. Okay. okay. Yeah. So let's I just get talking. You. All right, everybody. Here we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> all right. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Okay, so... What I really wanted to talk about today is something that a lot of quilters really struggle with, and actually all humans really struggle with this, and it's how to get more done in your life and to feel happier. So I have developed a program, a four-day pop-up group, to help people really combat procrastination. And so I wanted to talk to you, Lisa, because you're really good at getting a lot of things done. And people are always saying like, how does Lisa get so much stuff done? People ask me the same thing. I've got five kids. I have a full-time business. Before I was a life coach, I did quilting for hire, all of that. So would you like to share? Well, I guess maybe first things first, what do you think is probably the biggest reason why people, like where people are at with procrastinating? I always dance when Lisa's phone goes on. It's like the funnest ringtone. I love it. Okay. okay, so as Lisa's talking. Sure, do you need it right now? Because I'm on a live right now with StreamYard. That's so awesome. 
Don't we love technology? Okay. All right. If I get it, I'll text it to you. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. It's Kaylee. <laughs> so I thought maybe she had something. Yeah. Big with the problem. Changing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I was thinking a lot about is a lot of quilters, you have really big fabric stashes, have amazing good intentions, super inspired by so many projects. And okay. It's so hard because when even like looking at Lisa's studio right now, it's like, I love that one. And I love that one. And I want that one. And I want this one. And I want that one. Right. Like we want all the things. So we have really good intentions. Uh, the eye candy is a little bit overwhelming, right? It's so hard. Um, we kind of get discouraged because we don't get more done. We spend a lot of time on social media getting ideas and inspiration. We're pretty quick to start new projects, but not so good at like completing them. And we spend a lot of time comparing, comparing and despairing, I find. And then we don't spend a lot of time um, actually producing. So then we kind of feel like we're even lower and slower behind. Uh, we feel frustrated with how many, how much other people get done and we don't feel like we get as much done. And there's a lot of tools that we have, but we don't always have very, we're not really good at using them all the time. So then we feel a little bit discouraged. So that was, that's kind of why I think a lot of us are where we're at for procrastination. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I was just looking at some of the comments and they're like, yes, all those things. And yes, being overwhelmed about unfinished projects and getting bored with the project they're working on. And um, maybe they don't enjoy one part of the task. So yes, those are all great, great um, mm -hmm. comments. And yes, Dara is talking exactly about me is what Bree says. Oh my God, yeah. she's talking yeah. exactly like me. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. The, the reason yeah. why we're there is because we get really inspired by all the beautiful things that we want. Um, there is an amazing community. I love being a part of your community, Lisa. It's like so amazing. The women are so supportive. They're so great. I'm just starting my first wool applique. I'm really excited, but super, super nervous. So, but they're all really helpful. Um, we feel really connected to others. So we want to be helping other people. Like we want to be sharing. We want to be contributing. We feel like it's a belonging place. A part of our identity is being a quilter, being creative. That really fuels us. Um, and we're torn between the version of ourselves that wants the completed quilt and the fun feedback with the other version of like going forward with the fear of what's happening. So we, but we really want to be, we want to be more pr productive. We want to use our stash. We want to be able to know that when we buy something, it's going to get done. Oh yeah. Making a mistake is such a big deal. It's so hard. We want to just feel like super abundant. We want to like be able to do all the things and we want to be able to like um, be happy all the time in our life. <laughs> feel calm and collected. Like we want the picture book life, right? And I think one of the biggest problems and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, Lisa, is there's a lot of us that have tried to use willpower to just get more done. We also try to do things like we think if we compare and despair enough that we'll just like be mean enough to ourselves that we'll just get going. Um, some of us even do like a punishment reward system. Like you can't go buy anything else until you finish this thing. Um, so what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think there's, um, first of all, I think there's like a couple great tools on how to be, you know, more successful at getting your things done. But then I also think that, you know, there's like a physical part of it and then there's like a big mental part of it. Mm -hmm. So it all has to do with uh, a combination of making, having some tools to accomplish this and having the right mindset and having your, having you in a spot where it's a reasonable and, and, and um, just, uh, uh, sometimes I forget my words. So just being in a good spot mentally and knowing what to do mentally to prepare yourself for your everyday tasks. Yeah. And I think the other thing, like what you're kind of alluding to is like having appropriate expectations. Yeah. So yesterday, tell us about yesterday. What, like what you were able to do yesterday. What did I do yesterday? <laughs> 
Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. like, what are you referring to? Okay, so one of the things that I do, and that I never used to do this, I used to just kind of wing it off the top of my head, right? I'd be like, okay, what ne what needs to get done? And I'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would be like, okay. So now what I do now is in the, in the morning, I have like a daily tasks um, chart that I do. And I like, just to give you a quick down and dirty of it, because I like specifics, like I'll be mm -hmm. a Daryl, like, she'll be like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I want to know this, this, and this, and this. So one of the things that I've come up with for myself, because somebody can't give you a specific task list because your life is different from everybody else's. So some of the things that I need to do to run primitive gatherings is, um, I need to check my bank accounts. So I have a list of my bank accounts. I need to check my website, my end of day sales, my end of week, my monthly and my yearly. Like I want to know all those things, like where we're at, because that's part of being a good business person. And then I need to know like what I'm going to post on Instagram today because I want to do that daily. And then I have like three spots to check my stitch group three times in a day. So kind of like morning, noon and night. So I'm trying to keep in touch with you guys, see what's going on, create something if there's nothing going on. And then I want to uh, do one blog, blog post a week and I have like a topic that I want to discuss each week. And then I kind of work all week on getting that one blog post done. But then I also have some personal things on there like, did I drink my water? So I have like four water jugs you know, that my, my four Yetis, you know, and I can kind of cross them off during the day. So that's kind of like the hour one thing that I do in the morning. And then I have three things that I want to finish that day. So I'd be like, okay, American patchwork and quilting needs their stockings. So I need that on my list. I need to write a pattern for Kansas trouble and get her, you know, all the things she needs. And then maybe the other one yesterday was, um, uh, uh, put up a correction on my blog post or something like that. So I make sure I have those things done. So I have a daily hour one thing that I need to do every day. And then I have the three things that I'm going to do that day. And then I have my weekly calendar to make sure that I don't have an appointment in there or where I can fit all the three things that I'm going to get done. Like where do those fit in the day? Am I going to have time to do it during the day or is it going to be at night? So you kind of plan that. And if you have a plan of attack, a lot of times I end up with extra time because I sometimes I misjudge how, how fast things take or don't take. Right. And one of the things that I teach, especially with time management, is if you are reaching your goals 80% or more, then you, you can actually like you figured it out. And if you want to expand your ability to like do more then you can. But if you're not reaching that at 80 percent, then you, what your expectations are are too much. And if we get overwhelmed by something, it just leads to inaction. Right. But part of the part of the thing is knowing that not every day I'm going to finish my three tasks. Mm -hmm. So then you have another list of the things that, you know, for the rest of the week, like I have an ongoing list of all the things that need to get done. So then you'll either go pick something from that if you got it done early. Mm -hmm. Or you reward yourself and with some me time, some me mm -hmm. love, Dara calls it. She did you love yourself enough today? I'm like, no, I'm really bad at that, but okay, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> so there's all these things that we need to learn to put into this to be successful and to be happy with your work output, your stitching output, and your life output. So there's like, there's kind of a couple moving parts to this, I think. Absolutely. And I think one of the problems is, we don't have systems in place to help us have success. Right. So the, the, the problem is if we're not thinking about our thinking and we feel like everything is happening to us, then we really feel like we kind of get into a victim mentality and then we don't take control of our life. And so that's definitely a big part of the procrastination pop-up group that I'm doing because I have a, I have every Thursday I do a free training and you guys can all go on YouTube. You can watch all my free trainings. They're so great. You can register for them. They're free. They're awesome. So tomorrow I am going to be doing a whole like hour on procrastination, but it's such a big piece of what's going on with our thinking that that's why I decided to do the four day training just because I can, I see what a difference 
learning these tools make in my clients and I want to be able to help so many people. So will you put something in the stitch group for those links for your YouTube and all that information like, Hey, you can join this, you can do this, or you could be doing this. So yeah. some of the things are free. So why not take advantage of them? You know, a lot of times I do a lot of the video watching while I'm stitching. So mm -hmm. I'm doing two things at once. So to me, that's like a double win because I am educating myself and I am getting my stitching done. So yeah, that's what I say to all my clients. I'm like, listen, you can all bring your stitching with you. Right. And so many of my clients, like they'll have their stitching beside them. They'll have their book, they have their stitching. And I used to be an elementary school teacher. And I knew that like there were certain kids that they needed to be doodling to really listen. And I actually would give them a test to make sure that they were listening. And if they could prove to me that they could doodle and learn better, not a problem. So um, one of the things that I'm going to talk about tomorrow and in our group, and I just wanted to give some really tangible tools for some of you, because not everyone can come and that's okay. The four day group, it's $7. It's, it's nothing like it's, it's just a, it's just a kind of a mind trick to commit your brain to doing something like, Really? Well, and I also think sometimes if there's not a monetary value attached to something, then we just don't do it. We don't think it has value. Right. So it is a little bit, I mean, I'm a mind person. Like that's what, a, like a life coach is someone who helps you think about your thinking. So it, there is something really valuable about that. And one of the things, and I think a lot of us can relate to this, is we have, like I call it, and in fact, I got it from Tim Urban. He did a TED talk a while ago, and it's so fun. But he talks about the instant gratification monkey. So one of the things that happens is, you know, like those little like monkeys that that do the little symbols, they want to be happy all the time, they don't want to have any problems. And so the instant gratification monkey often speaks louder than the rational mind, this rational decision maker. And one of the problems with with procrastination is that when we see the quilts, so all of you can see like all the really awesome quilts behind Lisa and we see them and we want them. But the problem is our future self wants the quilts, but the current self is the one who has to make the quilts. And it's easy to buy the quilts, buy the fabric. That's easy, right? You just click and pay and it's amazing. And Lisa's staff does such a good job and they send it to you, no problem. But then the current you has to cut all the half square triangles and has to make sure everything is complete. And so you have this like dilemma between your future self who wants the completed quilt and wants to post all the pictures and the current self who kind of just would rather look at other people's quilts, especially when you come, you're having a problem with your machine and there's tension and all the other issues, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. So do people have questions about procrastination? I, I don't actually see the comments. You don't get to see them? Oh. No, I don't see them. So I can put some of them up. Okay. So yeah. So if you have any questions about anything at all, mm -hmm. please ask Dara right now. And then I will give you, um, here's a, some good advice. Start with a clean, uncluttered workspace and work on one project at a time. I do this by making a list. Check off when I'm finished and move on. Right, so this is the beautiful thing, Victoria, and for everyone there, our, everyone is unique and individual. Like we really are so individual, which is amazing, right? We don't want all of us to be the same. And so what works for one person might not necessarily work for somebody else. And it's so amazing to give yourself permission to like create your own way of doing things. Some people actually really thrive on having lots of different projects and scheduling your time to say, I'm going to, work on this for one and a half hours and then I'm going to do something else. Like we're all very different. Yeah. Yeah. So I find myself completely different. Like I am, you know, I might have three different things going, but I I'm pretty much, I finish the quilt I'm stitching and then I have one hand project. So I only work on those two projects. I can't have more. Mm -hmm. I can't have six things going. So, and I think everybody's a little different, but that's really how I get things done is I have one machine project and I have one hand project and they get done. So um, maybe you should, maybe if that's not how you work, maybe you should try a different way of how you do it.
because maybe you find that maybe you will get it done if you do concentrate on that. Right. And so one of the things, so I'm going to be in the, in the pop-up group, I have six, there's six really big reasons why we procrastinate. And um, I'm going to share about those. And then I'm going to give you practical tools to overcome them. So here we have, uh, I have so many of Lisa's projects. I feel like I'll, I'll never be finished, but I love every one of them. I have about five going on. Okay. So one of the things that happens is that when we get overwhelmed, it leads to inaction because it's, it's just, it's, I mean, think about it. If you're drinking from a hose, like if, I, if you said, oh, I'm really thirsty and I put a hose in your mouth, like you're just like, oh, oh, oh. you hardly get any water. So when we feel overwhelmed by things, it, the same thing can happen to us. And so we need to like slow everything down. And like what Lisa was saying about organizing her time, we need to slow down, organize what's going on, start prioritizing, and then we, we get really honest with ourselves and then we can make a plan moving forward. But one of the biggest parts is learning to trust ourselves. That's the first step to building self-confidence. So when we have all these projects and we have this history of not getting things done, we're not very confident. We don't trust ourselves to say, hey, when I'm gonna do this, I'm not gonna, like, you're not gonna go and watch Netflix and or go scroll two hours on Facebook and you're like, I'm never getting those two hours back. Well, and I think people have to be realistic, right? So you have to stop comparing yourself to me because if you and I were sitting in the same chair and started the same project, some people are just naturally fast at things. But that doesn't mean that that's any better. I mean, that that's all in your mind. Like, oh, I must not be good enough because I can't stitch as fast as Lisa. I mean, I might have a God-given talent. Maybe your God-given talent is something else, but you love stitching, so you're doing both. Like, I love to ride my bike. Do you think I can ride my bike as fast as everybody that, you know? No. So you just have to be realistic about yourself mm -hmm. and where you're at and stop comparing to yeah. everybody else out there. And it's all in your own mind. And you have to do the work and do the time, too, because you actually... Uh, you know, get out what you put into it. So if you're not watching videos on how to do something, or if you're not putting the time in stitching, you're not going to get any better. So your expectation for getting better shouldn't be as high if you're not putting in some of that legwork in taking classes, watching the videos, mm -hmm. and putting the time in doing the stitching, because you don't get better at the stitching if you don't do it. It just doesn't automatically happen. Right. It just reminds me, so when I was a professional long armor for people, when people first brought me their quilts, I bought my, my long arm. All I really knew how to do was loops and wood grain. So people would bring me their quilts and I'd say, oh, that's a beautiful quilt. I think loops would look amazing on it because I had to give myself permission to like learn somewhere. And, I had, and so I got really good at loops and then I got really good at wood grain and then I was able to build. Yes. And enjoying the process. Like, so I'm a weight loss coach and, but weight loss is never about the food and all my clients are quilters. And so it's super fun. But one of the things that I say to my ladies all the time is if we're not having fun, we're doing it wrong. Like we gotta have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mary Miller, one of my screenshots on my phone is comparison is the thief of joy. Yes. And we still do it because we're human. That is like, we have to give ourselves permission to, to, to be human. It's okay. And so what, what starts happening is the more conscious you are of your thoughts, the more easily you recognize, oh, there I am comparing myself again. And then when you're aware of it, then you can consciously stop it and you like shorter and shorter times, just like with food, right? When we used to buffer, well, you can still buffer with food, but instead of buffering for two hours, four hours or for a whole week and start again on Monday morning, we like, Oh, recognize, look what I just did. I ate a whole bag of chips. Instead of beating yourself up for three more hours, you're just like, Oh, moving on. Let's keep going. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And then, you know, some of the, the, the keys to, to getting things done is always be prepared. Like yeah. I always try to prep the next thing 
before I'm done with one thing. So I, I, if I have a, a couple of like before I, when I was waiting, you know, I, I got my stream yard set up. I was kind of mm -hmm. waiting. So uh, I put, I made a sleeve for a quilt and then I had a couple more minutes. So I cut the binding and, you know, so I'm always, you know, having things to do that's very accessible and that you can do in short periods of time. So, uh, because I just got that quilt back from Linda there. Can you see it on it's the table? so glorious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you'll be seeing a lot of that soon, trust me. But, um, so do you see how, I just didn't sit here and wait or, you know, scroll, scroll on my phone or watch the auction that's going on right now that I'm missing that I don't care. But, um, because, you know, you just can't have everything and do everything. So right. you just, be ready for when you do have those moments. Right. And that's, that's part of, um, that's part of like getting your own back. That's one of the concepts I like to teach everyone is one of the, one of the problems we have with procrastination is fear, of course, and fear really holds us back. And so, uh, here we go. So I find after this working a weekend going home, I feel guilty about sewing. I clean and cook. But even after that is done, I sometimes feel guilty. Okay. Do you know how often I coach women on feeling guilt? Like almost every single day. Okay. So guilt is having two opposing thoughts or it's denying yourself an emotion, a feeling or something. So that's so interesting, Brie, that you bring that up because when we see, oh my goodness, I'm feeling guilt. And guilt is just an emotion saying, hey, you should pay attention. So for all of you women out there who have fibromyalgia, who have arthritis, those kinds of things, a lot of the reasons you're having those, like a lot of those aches and pains have to do with you kind of ignoring your body and ignoring what's going on. And because you're not paying attention to the guilt, you just kind of plow through and you just keep doing things. So when we have arthritis or fibromyalgia, things like that, it's we really need to start slowing down because the body's like, we need to start paying attention to our feelings. So anyways, when we feel guilt, what I want you to do is notice it. So I love that you wrote that down, Brie. And then we start getting really curious. Like, why do I feel guilt? Why do I, why do I feel that way? And I can totally relate to this because, you know, I have five kids and I work full time and I think I got to get this house clean. I got to do this. Like we have these expectations, like going back with Lisa said, is like really managing our expectations and then getting curious and asking yourself why, like what's going on. So yeah. that's super, super important to start really paying attention to those emotions and learning from them. Right. And I mean, I think part of enjoying the process might help you like relieve some of that guilt. I mean, if you truly enjoy sewing, Brie, I mean, Life is short T to have that guilt that, you know, you should be cooking or you should be cleaning. Nobody remembers you for your clean house when you're gone. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to say, oh, yeah, that Brie, her house was always spotless. No, they're going to say, oh, look at these quilts or look at these projects that Brie did. OK, so I always say, you know. I know I love a clean house. I love organization. I can't function in messes, but. If I have to pick one over the other, you know which one's going to win. <laughs> right. And I think one of the biggest things that I've been, that, I've, that I'm always learning and I'm, I'm helping my clients is really understanding what does a balanced life look like. Right, right. Okay, yeah. like we don't want to do this pendulum, pendulum thing where it's like your house is always a mess. No, that doesn't feel good. But we also need to really get curious about why do I feel guilty? And maybe like with co Corona happening, we've kind of been able to take a step back as a society and decide what's serving us and what's not like having zoom meetings. That's pretty efficient for some things, right? Like you don't have to get in your car. You don't have to do all these things. So there's been don't some have to put your pants on. That's right. <laughs> my kids always tease me like, why do you wear pants? Mom, you should use your pajama bottoms. And I'm always sitting with my clients. I'm like, well, anyways, I have lots of fun pants. I feel sewing stitching is me time. And when I don't get my me time, I feel guilty that I didn't make time to do things I love to do. Okay. Yeah. We got to, we got to work out this relationship. Right. And we really need to get clear. Like I think Lisa is such a good example of this, of 
what expectations that she has of herself. And what I love that what Lisa does and all my, what my clients learn to do is they learn to collect data, what we call it. And so it's like, okay, how long does this actually take me? Okay, so now I can plan for that. Right. So when you need to make a binding or you need to sew a binding on next time you do it, just kind of in your mind, think about that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you'll have that in your bank and be go, oh yeah, I can put that binding on right now because I have an hour or that right. type of thing. So um, that all helps you uh, enjoy your life and, and prioritize your me time, the, the stuff you have to get done, the stuff you want to get done mm -hmm. and, and those things that uh, make you very happy and those things you know, because it's all about, like, like I said, life is so short that you have to do what you love and, yeah. and, but you have to feel good about it and you have to make time for yourself. So, yeah. And I have, I have some really good strategies that I'm going to share in the pop-up group on how do you manage all the expectations that you have for yourself that you have, that other people have for you and how do you create that balance? And so we're gonna get some, we're gonna do some investigation and really work towards learning what's happening. One of the things that I do is I work on, a lot of my clients work, have a lot of problems with perfectionism. So I wrote a 12 step perfection recovery program. And one of the problems that we have is we don't know what our expectations are of ourselves. So we're always a moving target. Okay, so being overwhelmed is spot on. I work 10 hours a day and only have the weekends. There is so much in my head I want to do. I almost completely shut down, 100%, Pamela. Yep. So one of the strategies that I teach is we do what's called a thought download. And one of my, one of my clients, she calls it ricochet rabbits. Don't <laughs> you totally like relate to that? Yeah. I like think of it as a pinball. So what happens, Pamela, and everyone else, it's like our brain is not meant to hold information. Our brain is meant to be a central processing unit, but when we are like taking in all the stuff saying, I need to do this, I need to do that, and this happens, and this happens, and we don't have an outlet, and we don't have a way to process our thinking, we get really plugged up, right? It's like a dam, and it doesn't work very well. And that's why we do like the buffering and the overwhelm, we just kind of shut down because we just, we really do. We've kind of like hard, like circuited our brain and it's, it's not going to work properly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So one of the other things that I thought of is that, and there's a lot of working people here. All right. And you have to really get creative with your time. And I understand that. And another thing, and, and, and like I said, Dara has lots of information on how, how to make you, how to manage that, how to make you feel good about that and how to figure that out. But then there's a lot of people on here who are retired. All right. Mm -hmm. And your time is like, you got all the time in the world, right? And only you are in charge of your time. So when you get nothing done in the day, whose fault is that? That's you. That's on you. And one of the things I hear is, well, I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this. Well, I want you to try to say no one time. Mm -hmm. Just say no. When somebody says, hey, can you make such and such for the the quilt, the sewing tonight? You say, nope, I can't do that. It won't fit in my schedule. And you don't have to give an excuse or why you can't do it. Just mm -hmm. say no. Try yeah. saying no sometimes. And you will feel better and better about it. And it's okay to say no. You can't do it. Because I think so many people, when they, they, they work so hard to get re retired, and then they get themselves in all these other things that suck mm -hmm. their time away. Mm -hmm. And if you choose that, on your own free will and you want to, that's great. But if you feel that everybody else is pulling you in a different direction, start saying no, because you deserve it for yourself. Right. Okay. Um, so I call the, I call perfectionism, procrastination and people pleasing the triple P and they all relate to the same source. Um, but that's a huge thing. So one of the things that also, there's two different kinds of procrastination. There's the kind of procrastination that we have a deadline and we panic. And then there's the procrastination. And this is, this goes to the retired ladies out there um, is there's no deadline. So guess what happens? You just extend it forever and ever. And then it never happens because you don't have, so in this, in you don't have the um, what's it called? The panic monster to get you going. Right, yeah. All right. This is crazy how much this sounds like me. The perfectionism is a big problem. A hundred percent. 
So when I used to teach professional, like I used to teach, and I still do, actually tomorrow I'm teaching a free motion quilting class. And I would, at the end of every class, I said, hey, listen, ladies, I am the president of the Perfection Recovery Program. <laughs> and inevitably, ladies would come up to me afterwards. I'm looking for my copy. And they would say, is that real? Is that a real thing? And I'm like, actually, so here it is. I actually did write it. So I literally wrote a 12 step guide. And in fact, in the program, the pop-up group on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm actually gonna have you go through the perfection, uh, that's a quiz. And it's really interesting because the quiz, you rate yourself, and then at the end, you'll find what level of perfectionism you're at. And then I can kind of explain to you, like, what's happening in your life because you're at that level. Right. Um, I think I'm, like, I'm a denial. I'm in denial about my perfectionist, aren't there's I? There's a lot of ladies out right. there that are, too. Well, I'm like, I am not a perfectionist. I can let those points go. I can, you know, but perfectionism is disguised in many ways. So yes. that's what I learned because I thought I'm not a perfectionist, but really yeah yeah and it's okay because really perfectionism is we're just trying to be like a better version of ourselves but the problem with perfectionism is it's grounded in what other people think of you rather than what you think you don't you haven't learned to get your back in that same way and it's okay i mean think about how we were raised when we were kids we needed the approval of of adults to um to survive so all right, I want to hear all the comments. These are so all fun. Right, I'm setting them up here. I'm getting. I'm trying to get them. Oh, I love it. Triple P. That's for me. I know. In fact, so I have a 12 week um, weight loss program that I that I have groups of women go through, and a week eight was the triple P. And the first time I went through it, I was like, I have to write this book. So I actually offer every Monday if when you belong to my program, we do the perfection recovery class every Monday. It's amazing. Okay, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't forget to let kids learn to help or have chores. Sometimes cheap help is priceless like a high schooler. Do things to make your life easier. Okay, Terry, I got to tell you, I, 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 I did this um, back in 2019. Oh, I joined late. How can you join? The, okay, I'm going to leave the, the link in the pop-up group. Um, so in 2019, I did this whole month where I just dreamed about the life I wanted to have without needing to know the how. And I'm not kidding you. One of the things I put on there was I wanted a self-cleaning house. <laughs> and I have five kids. And through Corona, my kids were off school for, what, three, four months? And I was working full time. I just was starting my business. And um, my daughter is 16. She makes like three meals a day, a three meal, sorry, three meals a week or so. She does the laundry for the most part. And my son, who's 18, he just turned 18, he makes sure that the kitchen is clean every night before he goes to bed. Like it happens. And that, that builds character and better kids. Oh my gosh. So good. That's okay. the one mistake I made. Oh. Raising my kids is I didn't make them do enough chores. Well, and this is actually one of the examples about perfectionism. Uh, yeah. Procrastination. It's like you have this thing where you're like, I could probably just do it better. I don't want to have the hassle with the kids and I'll just do it for them. But right. then you don't, right. they don't have that opportunity to grow. Okay, so good. Perfection, never content with what I have. Oh my gosh, I only see what is left to do. Okay, so that, so that's so cool that you put that, Catherine. So what I, how I've organized my program is that I ask questions. So yours is, I'm the retirement procrastinator. Oh my gosh, we could have a contest. I You're know, not the right? person that said that. I need to set deadlines for myself, totally. But we want to set them with like commitment and love. So going back to Catherine's, it's all about the end result. No, no, no. Yours was, I'm extremely hard on myself. Um, She's yeah. never content with what is done. I only see what is left to do. That's right. Okay. So you constantly spot mistakes when others don't see any. Well, this can simply mean that you're just very detail oriented. Perfectionists often spot mistakes, issues from a mile away. So what happens then, You that was like number 10 in the question. So then you go to step 10 in the program and then you go through like the worksheets and the information and that will help you like overcome that. So, so good. What is the third P? Oh, perfectionism, procrastination and people pleasing. So it kind of is four P's actually because people pleasing is two P's, but 
You too, Lisa. Oh. They didn't have, yes. You know what? It's, this is one of the things too. I buy, okay. I buy tons of fabric and patterns, get excited, then hesitate to cut out that beautiful fabric. I know. I know. By the way, you have Just such a great it up. <laughs> I know. But like Michelle, the, one of the biggest things that they're keeping all of us back is fear. And fear really is the root of all of it, right? It's fear of our, of what other people think, fear of failure, what, what, what other people will say. Um, we have this whole shame blame. I am not good enough or something in my life isn't good enough. Like we go through all of that. And guess what? Welcome to being human. It's totally fine. And there's like, we can really overcome all of it. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to make my kids do more toys. Yes. Okay, Margaret. And if you want, you want suggestions. I'm really good at getting kids to do chores. Right. And I'm I'm telling you right now that that like I said that is the one mistake I made is not making those kids help enough. That's okay. Yep. You got great kids. But one of the things that I do, because um, remember I say everything has to be fun. If my kids are like causing me trouble, I literally tie their wrists together with a dishcloth and I make them wash the dishes together. <laughs> like we have fun, but I'm like, hey, you act like that. You get to do the dishes together. I can always do it tomorrow is my motto. Okay, so that's the problem. You never get to enjoy today. Mm -hmm. if everything is for tomorrow, right? You're just, you're just not giving yourself the opportunity to like really enjoy the life that you really want to live. And that's okay, we'll just, we can just work one step at a time, right? So one of the things I want to discuss, because I think it's very important, I think it's a very important thing, but um, I think controlling it is the most important thing, and that is social media, right? So we touched on it a little bit there, but I set up time, like I, I set up a timer like, okay, I, I'm only going to be, I'm only going to give mm -hmm. Facebook a half hour, and then maybe right. that's two or three times a day, or whatever that looks like, but you have to... Um, you, it's a necessity. We have we have to do that, but we yeah. also have to remember that when we look at social media, Facebook, Instagram, that people only show you the best of everything. Most people yeah. don't show you the crappy stuff. So yeah. just because every, you know, just because this person has so much good things, doesn't mean they don't have the crappy stuff. Yeah. So always keep that in mind and know that life is 50-50 or you know, it's not all great. It's not all great. And we all know that we're all old enough to know that those that are in denial about that are just faking it. And what's wrong with just saying, oh, my God, I look at I made this crappy mistake. I cut this wrong. I did this. You know mm -hmm. what? It's OK. Right. Mm -hmm. They sell more fabric. They. You know, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. So that I, I always go back to like when I was first long arming for people. And I literally could only do loops and wood grain. Like that's all I could do. And it was very much like, I can do this. This is how I start. It's hard when you have a person in your life that thinks that shaming you will make you do, oh yeah, in case losing the way can make cake. I totally hear you, Mary. And one of the problems is I want you to know that every one of us, we have some level of I'm not good enough story. It is amazing to me. Like I was convinced that I wasn't good enough. My mom, like my mom wanted me to be the best. So what did she do? And she didn't do this intentionally, but she was like, why can't you get this right? What's wrong with you? And she was very demanding. And she was, she was really honestly just trying to be the best mom. Like she thought if I had a really high standard, but the way I took it, I was very sensitive. And I just kept thinking, I'm never going to be good enough. And so then that feels shameful, right? And so until we can understand what's going on, then we can not, not like, then we can move on and we can like work through that. So, and you have a perfect way of like enjoying that whole process. So like while you're losing weight or while you're mm -hmm. making your clothes, you enjoy every step of the way you enjoy your life at 180 pounds and then you enjoy your life at 150 pounds and you mm -hmm. just keep enjoying your life along each step along the way. You're not going to be like, oh, I'll be happy when I reach 139. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, so, you know, you just enjoy it. And, yeah. and when it's, when you're ready and it happens and you, but you have to be like totally committed. <laughs> okay. So ladies, this is, I, I was, I, 
it's it's so true. Like if you're a 22 X, I want you to go out right now and buy pants that fit you nicely. And I want you, when you wake up, I want you to put on a little lipstick. I want you to just maybe fluff your hair a little and just be proud of who you are. Because when you're doing all this body shaming and all of that, it's not gonna, it's, you're not gonna really get it. And I, and I understand like that's a big process. Um, my sister and I figured out that if we finish something, then it's up for criticism. So if it's never finished, oh, but Bonnie, okay, this is one of the problems. We have instant grat, we have a false pleasure, we have instant gratification, and we have delayed gratification. So false pleasure is that little dopamine hit that we get when we scroll on Facebook, or we get you know a little something or a little boost from the food. But a lot of false pleasures, we just get emptier and emptier and emptier. And so we need to learn that muscle of delayed gratification. And so that delayed gratification, that feeling of like pride, that feeling of working through something, that feeling of, you know, being able to say, hey, look, I did something not so good and now I'm getting it better. That's where you're going to find the real joy. Right, because Bonnie, you don't really buy something, cut it all out, put half that work into it. And, and I mean, you cannot possibly think that you're not going to finish that or that you don't want to because you don't want any you don't want anybody to say anything bad about it. Mm -hmm. Is that really, really true? Or, uh, you know, I can't imagine that. So mm -hmm. I'd be like, you have to enjoy, like I said, every step of where you're at. Right. You have right. to be like, hey. I didn't even know how to read a pattern, you know? So now yeah. I can read a pattern. I can cut the right strips. Okay, so I sewed them a little crooked, but next time maybe I'll be better at it. You know, right. so you have to enjoy every step of the way. Like, I mean, I, one of these days, I'm going to show you some of my first quilts, okay? Oh, and, you got to do it, Lisa. And, um, so good. And my sister-in-law, Amy, has one because I could not. I'd be like, oh, my God, this is so ugly. I'm giving this away. So I gave it to my sister-in-law, and she has it, and she she brings it out every once in a while, but I promise you all, I'm going to show you it. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I do say to some of the ladies, because some of us have a lot of shame about like how much money we spent and all of that. So I say, well, hey, listen. Oh, and actually in the Perfection Recovery Program, I have a UFO challenge at the end where, and I one of the questions that I ask is, you know, like, what is the intent of the project? Do I still have the same intent? Who else could benefit from this unfinished project? Have I already had as much fun with this project as I can? Is it time to say goodbye? And sometimes, everyone, it is time to say goodbye because maybe what you like to do is you just like buying fabric and you just like buying kits. So right. maybe you just display them nicely on your, on your, and like be honest with yourself. You're like, I just like buying them. I like being in the group. So like, maybe that's what you do. Isn't that fun? <laughs> there are some people out there that yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, someday I'll learn to do those. But I, I got them there for now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And that's okay. Like, let's not judge ourselves. Let's just be like, look at me supporting Lisa's business. This is, I'm a great human. And maybe <laughs> I'll have even more fun if I learn to make them. Or maybe not. And that's okay. Okay. Overwhelmed by the covering cutting table. Well, by the covered covering cutting table, iron board, ironing board is so used it as an excuse to not cut iron. Yeah, okay. So this is also part of the perfection question I have about everything has to be perfect before you start. And so all you're doing is you're just looking for excuses um, and you're just not willing to like overcome your fear. So I always say excuse reason. I know, right, Lisa? It's like, right. this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Patrice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you cut. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You go get some bins. A big tub. That's what I was going to say. Then you have it all in one tub. So when you need to That's find it. it, you know where it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of baskets. I'm like, oh, everything looks so pretty. My tubs. I showed them all my tubs I got around here. Oh, did you? Yes, I did in one of my videos. I love it. Yeah. So let's just, you know, overwhelm is like, when you feel overwhelmed, you're like, oh, wait a minute. I know what Dara said. When I feel overwhelmed, it leads to inaction. So do I want to live in a life of inaction or do I want to live in a life of action? 
I just get to decide. This one's good right here. This one's good. Okay. You can't compare our beginning process to someone else's middle. Absolutely, Catherine. Right. That's what I say. I'm like, you can't compare your stuff to me because I've been doing this for 25 years. So yeah. why would it be fair if yours was better than mine or, or just as good? You have to, and, and trust me, sometimes they are good only after a, a one or two projects because yeah. this stuff is um, very easily uh, accomplished. But I agree. You can't, you can't compare. You have to quit comparing. Well, and like, let's think about like, why are we doing this in the first place? Like, what's, what's, what's the point? Is it because you want to just like relax? You just want to have some meditative time. You want to create something. You want to fill that creative need. Like, what is it? Do you, is it therapy for you? So good. Okay. It took a lot of bravery for me to be vulnerable and send my quilt to primitive gatherings because it was my very first and everlasting. So good. Way to go. I hope it came back good. <laughs> I'm sure it did. But yep. I'm telling so one of my things that I say to all my clients is the more willing you are to be vulnerable, the more success you're gonna have. Exactly. Honestly. Because it's like here I am, world. Why do you think kids like childlike love? They're so easy to love because they're like, this is just how I feel. This is just how I am. Okay, at 66 years old, I finally like myself. Oh my gosh, isn't that amazing? That's so great, Carol. I have clients. That's a good feeling. I feel the same way. Like I am, I'm not so hard on myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not so, um, I feel so much freer to do what I really love to do. I give myself permission to enjoy not doing something one day. And, and I never would have done that before because there's just too many things that have to be done or too many things I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. But I've learned to, you know, sit back figure out what matters and enjoy everything that I do, including the things I don't really like to do. I enjoy them because I know they're necessary and I know they're a part of life. And I just love, I love doing every part of my life. And if there is some one part I don't like, I, I try to give that to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And sometimes we just say, this is just part of life. Sometimes you have to clean toilets. Yeah. And that's okay. You don't make a big deal of it. You're like, yep. Yeah cleaning toilets now, but guess what? I can afterwards do blah, blah, blah. Okay. So good. I love all of these. Yeah. Take this is any fun. question, ladies. I love helping you. I love my clients. I love seeing their progression. I love seeing how, how much happier they are. Will this be accessible later? Yeah. Right. Yep. This is be, I linked it to YouTube, my YouTube, and it's going to be in the Facebook group. So yes, it will be uh, available later. So, uh, yeah. All right. So what would you say if I have, this is actually one of the questions I have. I have like a really, uh, for any of you who have worked with me, I know there's people on here that do. Um, I love, I love me a good workbook. <laughs> and so one of the questions I have at the beginning of the procrastination workbook that you're going to get in the pop-up group is if I had a magic wand to solve any of your procrastination problems, what would it be? So what would you say is probably, like, I'd love to hear this from, from you. What do you think are your biggest problems with procrastination? Like why you procrastinate? Because you see how beautiful the finished product is. I'd love to hear your answers. And Lisa, you're going to have to post them because I can't see them. <laughs> well, I will. I'll, I'll wait for them. All right, so it takes a little bit for them to come in. That's okay. Isn't this amazing? I live on Vancouver Island in Canada. You're in Wisconsin. Like, and we have like quilters from all over the world on this page. I just, it's a, it's a marvel. Like it really is. Okay, so we're talking about procrastination. Mm, wait until the right. right moment. Okay. So I want you to get like really curious of like, what would the right moment even look like? overwhelmed absolutely hey nancy so good to see you getting started okay so that this is where we go to like with overwhelmed and getting started get curious what is overwhelming what is hard about getting started like really detailed oh anxiety okay guess what in the pop-up group i'm going to teach all about anxiety i it's one of my favorite tools it's helped so many of my clients. It's helped my kids. 
And we're going to, we're going to really talk about anxiety there. Um, not good enough. Okay. So like I said, we either have this, all of us humans in some way have some form of I'm not good enough, which brings on shame. It's heavy in our, you know, heavy on our chest or something about my life wasn't good enough. So then you feel um, blame. There's some sort of flow of blame. Okay. Fear. Welcome. You got this, right? Fear is like totally, totally normal. Stopped by a problem. Okay. So you've had an obstacle and you don't know how to, you just don't, you just haven't got the obstacle strategies work worked out yet. So good. What else? What else? Oh, thinking I'm not good enough. Oh, thinking I am good enough. Okay. So believing that you are capable to do that. So good. I procrastinate because I feel overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, you guys are all in the right place. Overwhelm is, we're going to like totally work through all of it and come tomorrow to my free training too, because that'll be helpful. Feeling overwhelmed and just getting too tired, to, oh, getting too tired to deal with it. Right. So this is one of the problems. You just keep telling the same story over and over and over again. It's almost like think about a road in a rut, right? When you, that's how ruts get formed in a road. It's just the same cars go over the same spot and just depresses the ground. So we have these old thoughts that just do the same thing and they feel really heavy and they don't feel like they're solvable. I always want to wait until all else is done so I can focus and feel relaxed, but that time never comes. Yes. So you're having a problem prioritizing yourself. Yep. yep. And yep. it really is a way of having an excuse for like something deeper. Like you're afraid you're going to mess it up. You don't have confidence in your abilities. So that's just, that's just normal. Just know that that is totally what's happening. Fear of failure or not being able to make it just like that quilter I watched in the tutorial. I know that's crazy. No, that's not crazy. That's normal. Right. And there's a reason she's on YouTube explaining it to you because she's probably done something like that for the last 20 mm. years or 10 years or whatever. So do what you can and however that looks and then move on to the next project. Right. That's so somebody's going to love that. Somebody's going to love what you do. Yeah. So one of the things that, so I teach free motion quilting. I always say, listen, you go clean out your closet of all the old sheets that you don't use anymore, throw some batting in it and just quilt and quilt and quilt and practice and practice, and then chop those all up and send them to the SPCA. Yeah. They can use them for dog beds. Right. Oh, okay. This one's really interesting, Joey, not meeting our people's expectations. So again, we have a moving target because do you, first of all, what are other people's expectations? And second of all, what are your expectations and what you care about you is the most important. So we're going to learn that. Feel guilty doing something fun versus what I have to do. Yard work, housework. Okay. So let's have a balanced life, ladies. Seriously, that is so important. So good. Thanks for sharing. You guys are being really good, like vulnerable. I love it. What else is what else is stopping you from okay sometimes I procrastinate because I can't start something when I want to and I have to sew when I can fit it in right so once again we're not prioritizing ourselves and our time and and energies uh, I'm going to talk about this in the course like we're like a battery we only have so much fuel I worked on my procrastination by cleaning up the things I would not not ever work on or did not like anymore I donated to a local guild, which put all those items to good use. It cleared my plate to focus on projects that made me happy. Right. Lifted the weight right off of you. So Don't feel great. so bad. Yep. That's so great. So now we get to just keep working. I see lists in my future, allowing me to give me myself permission to enjoy my sewing. Right. So we just need to start getting a, a system and an organization in place. Like I said, learning how to get your own back really deciding like this is the kind of life I want to have. So in order to have this kind of life, I need to be willing to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Seeing people get so much done with their projects and thinking how they, are they able to complete so much in such a short time? Yes. We're back to that compare and despair. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't know that that was done in a short time. Like I am like the perfect person to tell you that there's sometimes I stay up really, really, really late. And it takes hours and hours and hours for me to get my stuff done. It looks like I did it overnight, which I did, but it really took me 16 hours to do it that day. So, but 
I have deadlines. This is my business. I have to get this done. So um, the good thing is, is I still enjoy it. So I, I don't like dread it, but um, you have to put that in perspective into what you're capable of doing and what your life looks like. So you don't have as many hours as Susie does. You have this many hours. Susie has this many hours. So you just got to quit comparing and love your life. Yeah. And like, I, I do call my program, love yourself thin. And like Lisa's mentioned several times, we really need to start loving on ourselves. Like, which really, is hard. Which it's is hard. hard. Yes. We have this mean mom voice. We have this like, <laughs> Right. And she teaches, she's like, Lisa, did you love yourself today? I'm like, well, I guess I could. <laughs> yeah. just, but you, know, it, you get good at it. Yeah. We have to just practice at it. And it is, it, it's, it's that same thing I talked about with like your future self wants the completed quilts, your, um, but the current self is the one who has to do the work. And it's the same thing with loving your life. It's like, you want to have this picture perfect life, which by the way, is like always 50 50 like life is never like picture perfect all the time right um, thank you disney uh <laughs> right? happily ever after but we have to work towards being that person that does it okay so nancy what'd you say too much to do and not know where to start i just sit in yeah on my couch and watch tv so i don't have to deal with it right so nancy you have come a long way i get to work with nancy she's the best and she's actually lost how much? Well, 45 pounds, Nancy? Yes. Yes. It's amazing. Amazing. That's awesome, Nancy. Diabetes, all of that. Um, but even, even, even working with Nancy is a perfect example because we have all these old stories. And it's so interesting because Nancy actually does quite a bit, but she doesn't give herself credit. And she kind of, because she's not letting herself recognize i mean she's lost 45 pounds that is amazing that's so awesome. like, anyways um i think i missed that one the, the pop-up group will link it it starts on monday had way too much clutter and couldn't find my project sorry i forgot to have them approve me sorry i forgot to have them approve me you know me i moved the big weight today um hmm. sorry, you, know I you have to approve me I moved the big weight today. She could have told us her name. <laughs> I know. I'm like, is this someone I'm supposed to know? Because I know you know me. Um, but yeah, clutter. Let's get, like, get rid of the clutter. We got this. Yep. I have a primitive gathering project. Save her retirement because I don't think I'm good enough to do them now. Hoping I'll have better skills. Okay. But if I don't do it now, my skills won't ever be better. A hundred percent. Right. I mean, because you got to understand too that we get older too. So some yeah. people's, you know, skills and abilities and sight and all that kind of start playing into. So quit saving it mm -hmm. for someday. Enjoy it now, Yvonne. Enjoy it now. Mm -hmm. you love it now. Do it now. Yeah. And you know what, Yvonne, like once again, make an expectation of yourself. Like really, after I've worked on something for a long time, I'm sick of it. I need to put it away. Absolutely. Put it away. Just put it away. No big deal. Don't feel guilt about it. Just do it. Just put it away. And guess what? Someday you might discover it and be like, oh, I only have this much stuff to do. I'm going to finish that. So it, you know, it all has stuff to do with what kind of what you're dealing with at the time, where you are, you know, and if you, something is really not working for you, put it away, donate it, get rid of it, never look at it again, whatever. Yeah. So it's one of the lot. things like uh, we talk about in uh, the weight loss and in everything is we collect data. So it's like you just start le learning like what works well for you, what doesn't work well for you. You know, do you do better with having kind of like how Lisa has it, where she has like a quilting on a machine project and then a hand one, or do you have four or like whatever it is, just start collecting, excuse me, collecting data and deciding like what works well for me. But if you're spending all your time on Facebook, you're not even giving yourself an opportunity to collect data. Right. Yeah. I mean, Facebook can be our friend and our big time sucker too. So, you know, just, it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it all has to do with setting your guidelines and your, your boundaries, your boundaries and your buffering and all that kind of stuff. So you learn all those things with Dara. Preach. I love it. <laughs> I'm a grown woman and I have timers on my phone. Okay. Like, yeah. Right. Because we, 
we want to be successful and we want to be happy and we want to be all these things, but they do take work. They do take planning and they, they will happen, but it doesn't really, at the end of the day, it's really not that much effort because you're managing better. You're managing all aspects. So when that, when all the wheels are moving in the right spot, you're a happier person. And, and you'd be like, I got this. I can do this. I can do all the things. I can make this person, ha you know, I can, I can make this situation happen. I can build buildings. I can do whatever I want to do and nobody can stop you. Right. So. It's, it's so powerful ladies. Like it is amazing to watch how women like just apply these tools and they just create whatever they want. It's so much fun. Uh, with multiple projects, how do you decide what to do first? You just get to decide. But remember, right. like we have like guidelines. If, if there's like a wedding that's coming up that you want to make it, then prioritize that. I found keeping a journal of finished projects motivated me to keep on track. I, absolutely. I'm a huge fan of journaling. Mm -hmm. I'm also like kind of going back to what Lisa said about organization. So when you can feel organized and you can have a plan, then you don't feel, you don't fall into the trap of overwhelm. So one of the things that I have people do in this program is um, they like capture time capture exercise. So they actually write down like what did they do during those times because they want them to collect data. And then we get to get a realistic way of planning our projects. And so we have our UFO list and then we do the quilting project schedule so that we can actually get like realistic about what is an, like a realistic expectation of someone to do. Okay. So Linda says, I bought several quilt kits years ago and never done them. Uh, so I took the kits apart and re-looked at the fabric. Then I was able to make a project. I'm like, absolutely. Empowered, right? Yeah. yeah. Love it, Linda. Yep. There are so many uh, projects that you can make with the scraps or taking apart certain things. And we even do that at Primitive Gathering. Sometimes we make too many kits of something and we don't just, you know, toss the kit in the garbage. We recycle it or make scrap bags out of it or however that looks. So it's kind of like the same thing. Mm -hmm. So All clever. right. So I think if anybody has here, we got a nice little comment here. Um, yeah. So uh, this was Dara's idea. It was a good idea. I think mm -hmm. uh, I'm willing, always willing to share her with you through my groups mm -hmm. and my mm -hmm. thing, because she has done so much for me and my, uh, you know, just my well being. I, I can't stress that enough. Um, we all need sometimes somebody to, to help us to figure it out and to help us understand how we are and that we are normal. We're, there's nothing wrong with us. We, we just need help. And how are we supposed to know how to do all this stuff? I don't know all these things. And when, when they're explained to you, you're like, oh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it's a whole new concept of learning to think about your thinking. And it's really interesting. I was uh, talking to one of my clients who's a PT and she was talking about how they used to think about neuroplasticity. Like when someone would have a stroke, they thought that once it was done, it was done and it couldn't change. And so the more we study brain science and the more we study like our thoughts and the power that they have, the more we can create for ourselves. So I love going through certification. I love learning this. I work full time with quilters. Um, and helping them lose weight, but truly food is, it's never really about the weight. So whether we buffer on shopping or we buffer with too much Facebook or too much food, it's all the same concept. So thank you, this is so fun. So if you are feeling like you are stuck and you're not living the life that you really want, we need to talk. I think support is really necessary. Sometimes we get depressed and feel that we are the only ones struggling. We need interaction with supportive people. 100%. And mental health is, a lot of people have really struggled during COVID because they haven't been able to do the regular things. And so one of the reasons I actually decided to build the weight loss group program is because you know you don't have to feel shame anymore. You don't, you, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's so amazing to be in a group and they're all quilters and we can share things and we're, and it's so fabulous to see that what lady said, like, I had no idea I was the only one, a perfect attitude adjustment I needed. 
perfect, right? Right. So if you are, so I want all of you to come to my pop-up group. It's only $7. It's like a no brainer. It's going to be so amazing. Um, so that is actually the Facebook group opens on Saturday. We have a lot of fun interaction and then we're going to, I'm going to go live teaching Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You'll get your workbook. Thanks, ladies. Oh, it's 3 a.m. Oh, my goodness. Bonne nuit. Au revoir. And um, I lived in France for 18 months. And so then, uh, but I also am registering people for my Love Yourself Thin uh, weight loss group program, which is incredible. And that starts May 3rd. And it really is a game changer. I have 12 uh, modules and we work on weight loss science is simple. Then we work on emotions are the key to the universe. And then we create a future you whom you love being. So uh, I do have time consults for if you want to talk to me about that. I'm off to clean my sewing room to feel more organized. Yahoo! So good. Okay. I just want all of you ladies just to give yourself so much love. I'm always telling Lisa that. Like really be in the having of what you have. Like all of you are amazing. You really are. We all have amazing things about us. And the more that you can like be more open and honest with yourself and give yourself the opportunity to grow, like life is limitless. It really is. So I do want to really encourage you to just like, just look around you and realize like what a beautiful life you have. And um, yeah, I feel like you speaking directly to me. Okay, Chris, I get you. Like, it's so, it's so cool when I'm on a consult with someone and they'll be talking to me and I'm like, I'll say things and like, how did you know that? And I'm like, because this is what I do. Yeah. Like we're, we're not all special unicorns. Like we really are. Like we are all more alike than we are not. If you can't make one of the days. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for asking Valerie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach live and then they'll, they'll, the classes will all be recorded and they will live on the Facebook group. So the Facebook group will be alive for one year. Love to both of all US uh, sculptures. Oh, St. George. I love St. George. I have St. George. Color. Yeah, my mom, uh, she would love to, she spent her a couple summer winters there and she just loved it. She felt like she was a kid. We just had so much fun to play. Great conversation. Thank you, ladies. Yes. So all of us women need to stop feeling guilty about something. Society has conditioned us to feel this way. Stop. Do what you love and <laughs> That sounds like something I would say, right, Dara? <laughs> yeah, I know. Lisa's like, she has some ideas of names for the procrastination group. And I was like, oh, maybe I won't use that one. Right. But I'm telling you, Elizabeth, like so much of the work I do is really eliminating guilt. And it's very fascinating because guilt is stored in our bodies where our creativity is. And so we need to like unleash the guilt so that we can be creative geniuses. I'm not kidding. How come Thank you're you so much. smart? <laughs> I know I am so smart. I learned. Yes, yes. And you know what? I always say to all my clients, I'm like, we're, I'm we're, I, I actually attract really smart, intelligent, very um, capable women. And the thing, the fun thing is I don't feel like I'm smarter than they are. Like I'm not smarter than them. They're not smarter than me. I just have the tools and I've just used them more and I'm so dedicated using the tools. And basically we kind of all have the same things going on. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I know that's how, you know, because we're all, we're all women. We all have those same issues. We all have, and yeah, it all boils down to, we're all the same. We all have the same kind of issues. Right. And so that's the beautiful thing is that I have spent dedicated my time to helping people overcome that. <laughs> guilt, the guilt keeps guilt leaving. <laughs> no more, no more guilt. That's right. That's right. So, oh, another one too that some eight ladies uh, talk about being smart. I'm getting smarter. So a lot. So actually, thinking about guilt and hot flashes. So I do have a special program that really helps you understand more about menopause and perimenopause, and how that's to do with um, like all the thoughts that we're having. So if that is something that you're really struggling with, uh, I definitely can help you in that department as well. Cause I know that that is, that holds people back a lot. Oh, how do we register and pay? Right. So uh, for the, that's right, the $7. They want to give you your, their money already. <laughs> I know, I love it. 
And then the, the love yourself thin program, you, we've got it. You, you got to sign up for that. It's so, yeah, awesome. so look in my group and Dara's going to post something there tomorrow or tonight or whenever, but okay, it'll right be now, there. Yeah. 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 So yeah. And then I'll have, I'll put in uh, my link to, so it's called event bright. So you just pay the $7 and then you'll get in. And then um, if you want to have a, a, um, a consult with me to meet with me and talk about my love yourself thin program, uh, then you can do that. And then I also put the link for my webinar and also I'll put in my YouTube channel because you can binge watch me. It's super fun. I do all the free trainings and they're all while on you're stitching. while you're stitching. You have to stitch while you're doing it. And then you keep your notebook beside so you can like write your notes. Exactly. All right. Well, this was awesome. I think it was more than what I expected. So I think we might have blew out their little expectations of what you can accomplish in a very short time. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything left lastly to say to them? Okay. My biggest thing, and I, I, I was actually just on a podcast and I, this is what I said to the ladies, uh, the, and the, the end of the podcast was, so my personal like journey of, about my weight and my body and all of that, I um, really struggled with it off and on my whole life. And I remember I started doing these tools. I started using them and everything. And it was really fun. I got to 170 pounds, which when I got married, I was 164. And I have five kids and, you know, pregnancy. And I was 46. So going through the perimenopause. And I was super, super proud of myself at 170. And actually, when you go on my YouTube channel, you'll see me at 170. I look pretty good. And I was just loving my life. I was using the tools. I was really implementing them all. And so I just started living my life. I just started enjoying my life. Food had its purpose, right? It gives us minerals and nutrients. And I, I still was doing my protocol, still weighing myself and everything. And the next thing I knew, literally, so that was in like, I don't know, May or something. And then by December, I weighed 150 pounds. And it wasn't even like, I, I wasn't even doing it on purpose because I learned to love myself unconditionally. And I learned to love my life and accept the negative and be okay with it and not overreact. So that's really why I call my program Love Yourself Thin because we learn to actually start appreciating life you have. And you guys will see Lisa, she's a great example of that. Okay, Lisa, how do we manage, oh, how do you manage your time when you're, you're creating? Do you put your phone somewhere else so you aren't tempted to check emails? Oh, good question, right. Cheryl. Right. So like I said in the beginning, and maybe you didn't see this, so go back and watch from the beginning because um, I kind of talk about how I structure my day. But I do give my time like three slots to look at my phone. But yes, I put it away. I don't I don't I don't want to be tempted by it. I will leave my ringer on in case some of my staff needs to to call me. Um, but you know, most people don't call it anybody any day. So when they do call, it's usually my staff because nobody everybody's texting. So um, yeah, I just or I'll look at it, and if it's not anybody I, that I need to um, address, I just let it go to voicemail and I address it later. So I do prioritize my time that I have to do mm -hmm. to get my projects done. So it's yeah. all about that organization. Right, and, and so- honor, And honoring your schedule. Yeah, yeah, and so I, so in my group program, I have a, actually like a private video bank of deep dives and one of them is the program that I taught Lisa about it's called Monday hour one and so it's a way of like scheduling your time and all of that and there's like a whole workbook and four videos and all of that so that's another one that you can really dive into and learn from right and just in that one hour I feel like I get so much accomplished just in that one hour that I've done all those things that satisfies a lot of my stuff so yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah you really learn how to get your own back it's really fun. You get to be like the CEO of your own life. That's right. Who says you can't be a CEO? I know. Well, that's a problem, right? So many of us don't feel like we can take power. Like we, like I said earlier in the video about, or in this, it was about being a victim. And a lot of us fall into that victim mentality. Like everything is happening to me where really we just get to decide. Right. It's really fun. Exactly. Well, thank you everybody. We you really guys are the best. Lisa, it was so fun to spend this time with you and all of you ladies. So much fun. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see. We got okay. We just got a couple more. Make the spouse do more. Yes, make the spouse do more. I have an excellent husband. He's very good at helping. 
Thank yeah, you. This was wonderful. Good. I'll just do these last couple comments and yeah, then we'll fine. sign off for about an hour and a half. So that went by like, I know so fast ladies. So good. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm so excited. Sign up for my free training tomorrow. Uh, you can sign up for my, Oh, Hey, if you sign up for my, um, if you go to my website, darathomason.com, I have I don't know. If, I don't know how many of you did this in the summer with Lisa and I. We did a five-day training of, of, of like weight loss and everything, and that exact training is a five-day series, and you have like the PDFs and everything. Um, so when you sign up for my email, you get that five days, and that's that's awesome too. But um, and if you can't figure it out, just send me an email, and I will put you on my email list, and I have all the links for everything in my email. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Lisa, I think you should play your ringtone so we can all dance out. Like you can just like all dance. I don't know how to do it. I have to go to, um, okay. Oh, hang, on. hang on, hang on. I think I got it. I can always phone uh, you. Here we go. I'm phoning you. Okay. Oh, I got to turn it on. Okay. Let's try again. Okay. Everyone has to dance. Lisa, it's not letting me. It's not on. Hang on, it'll come on. Okay. <laughs> All right, bye, ladies. Have fun. I'm in love with your body. And last night you were in my room.